That's in Florida. Hallelujah. Make sure we're cooking here. Okay. All right. Well, tonight we want to, well, we're going to take the covenant meal tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about the covenant meal. And um, we'll start with um, the, the story of the covenant meal is actually in Matthew 26. We want to go back and forth between Matthew 26 and 1 Corinthians 11. And the, the story is pretty, pretty short in Matthew 26. We'll just read that. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to the disciples saying, take eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine until the day I drink it new with you in my father's house. We'll come back to 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 the Matthew story right there. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And this is the Apostle Paul writing to his partners, the Corinthians. He said, For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the night that the Lord Jesus, that this, I'm sorry, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. So it starts off, he says, in the same night, that he was betrayed, he offers the covenant meal. He offers the covenant meal. Now, he did it before the betrayal, meaning that he knew they were going to betray him. He knew what was going to happen. He knew that they were going to betray him, and he forgave them anyway. And he forgave them in advance of when they did it. It is the most important, after choosing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the most important decision that a human being can make is to be a forgiver. And to be and to make the decision to forgive in advance of when the offense is done. To be a forgiver no matter what happens, no matter what the circumstances. And I'm not suggesting that, you know, you you continue to set yourself up for situations to happen to you again and again. But what I am saying is that you must walk in forgiveness, not for the other person, but for you. And it is the most, once again, after salvation, it's the most important decision that a, a Christian can make is to be a forgiver. Because it keeps you fresh in the presence of God. And if you're not a forgiver, it blocks you. Yes. And uh, Mark eleven twenty two through 26, which is one of the most important passages in the whole Bible on faith, ends by saying, and if you have audit against another... Uh, actually, let's read that because it's, it's such a powerful picture. And it's Mark 11. And verse 25. And he says, When you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive... Neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Now, there's two things there. I mean, the, the implication of that is that you forgive based on uh, something that happened. But the reality is that what he's discussing here in 1 Corinthians 11, what he's saying is, what I'm going to give you is what I got from Jesus. And what I got from Jesus was that you forgive in advance. That you make a decision that you're a forgiver. No matter what happens, no matter what people do, you are going to forgive. You have already made the decision to forgive. You have already become a forgiver. And that's who we are. That's who we're supposed to be. So it's not done as a result of something that somebody did. It's done as a result of who you are. I am a forgiver. It's a decision that I've made because it's the decision that keeps me in the presence of God. Now, if you forgive based on specific acts there's a gap that occurs there the gap between when the person offended you and the time that you forgave them there is a gap there and satan can enter into that gap and you think well that may not be that big of a gap you don't know how big that gap is and you don't know how important that gap is and it's the gap that satan's looking for he's looking for that gap to be able to come in Come, come into that. And though it might be ever so short, there's still an opportunity there. 
per se to get in. But if you've made the decision in advance that I am a forgiver, and I forgive no matter what people do, I forgive. That, once again, it doesn't mean that I don't need to do whatever it is that I need to do, but I forgive. Because forgiveness is not about the other person. It's about me. It's about something. And it's about my relationship with God. And it's about what I am instructed by God to do. So, this is what he got from the Lord, and he's delivering it to, to us. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it, and he said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, he also took the cup, and when he'd supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show the Lord's death until he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the word unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. If we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. This represents, it represents a tool. It's a tool to remember what Jesus did for you. It's a tool to remember your relationship with him. It's a tool to remember your covenant. We're told in Psalm 103 to forget not all of our benefits. In other words, to keep the benefits, to keep the, keep the issues of covenant forefront in the forefront of our mind. Remember who we are. Remember Amen. what he did for us. Remember what he had. Okay. Now his body, this the, the, the wafer represents his body. Is there, you ever, everybody got their wafer? It represents his body that was broken for you. And it was broken that you could be healed, that you could receive by his stripes ye were healed. And we believe, of course, that as you partake of this bread, by faith, it becomes the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Jesus said, if you will not eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part in me. So when you take this bread yes. by faith, and it becomes the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you are you eating Lord. his you are eating his flesh, thank like like he said. So Father, I just thank Jesus. you that we lift up your thank flesh Jesus. tonight. Thank I thank you that we oh, remember you, that Lord. your flesh was that you gave your body for us. Your body was broken for us. And we thank you that you purchased for us the covenant as it relates to our body. And we thank you for that now in Jesus' name. Amen. And after the same manner, he took the cup and when he'd sup, saying, this cup is a new testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. It represents the New Testament in his blood. Now we believe that it becomes, once again, by faith, it becomes the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the blood, the word says that the life is in the blood. So the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the life of Jesus Christ was in his blood. And since he was God, that the life of God was in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you take this cup, what happens is by faith it becomes the life of God. And you are drinking fresh and new every time the life of God into your own into your own veins. And when you drink the life of God, what happens? It just transforms the remainder of the life that is in you. Now the the blood, the blood being the circulatory system of the body, the blood travels throughout the body every I think it's twenty eight seconds, twenty three, twenty eight seconds, something like that. Every twenty let's say let's say twenty eight. Every 28 seconds, the blood passes through every cell of your body. If you drink this cup, and this cup represents the life of God, within 28 seconds, the life of God, fresh and new, has touched every cell of your body, renewing and refreshing. And it's all by faith. It's done by faith. But by faith, when I take that cup, when I drink that, I am drinking the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's mixing with my blood. It's bringing the life of God to my blood. It's bringing the life of God into Amen. my circulatory system. Amen. And it touches every cell in my body. If there's anything wrong with any cell in my body, it is healed. If there's anything that needs to be touched 
with the, with the refreshing power of the life of God, it's touched within 28 seconds of the time that I drink that blood. So, Father, I thank you that by faith we drink your blood tonight. We do it because you said to do it. You said to do it in remembrance of you. And you said that we drink, and what you told the disciples was drink all of it. Drink all of the life of God. Amen. Drink every part Glory. of the life of God. Glory. Amen. We thank you. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, God. I thank you that contained within the life of God is the healing power of God, yes. the restorative power of God, the directive power of God. Amen. Everything that God has for the human being is contained in that blood, and it passes through your every cell of your body, bringing the life of God. Hallelujah. We thank you for that, Lord God. You should, you should use that as a means of, of, of judging yourself. And let's, let's, look, let's go back to Matthew now for... For just a second. Hallelujah. Back to Matthew 26. And so, after supper, after they had taken the covenant meal, they went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. So we'll pick up that story at verse 66. I'm sorry, 36. Then, then comes Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. And he said unto the disciples, Seek ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. And he said unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and he fell on his face and he prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. In other words, he didn't really want to go to the cross. He didn't have a desire to go to the cross. What he was saying to God was, listen, if it's your will, let this thing pass. Let me not have to do this, but I want your will more than I want my own. I want your will more than what I want for my own self. So if it's possible, let it pass. Nevertheless, I want your will. And he came to the disciples, and finding them asleep, he said unto Peter, Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation, for the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away again the second time, and he prayed, saying, My father, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, then thy will be done. What he is doing here is he's conforming his will to the will of the Father. Now, the mind, will, and emotions are a part of the flesh. They're a part of your humanity. They're the, they're the most resistant, the most difficult part of humanity to deal with. But the mind, the will, and the emotions, they are part of the flesh. And what he, he's doing here, and I want you to notice that this is the most important thing. This is the most difficult thing. I mean, he's already had the covenant meal. He's already said to the disciples that he's leaving. He's already said to the disciples that he's going to be crucified. He's told them that on several different occasions. And yet, he's still got to bring his mind to the place where his mind is conformed to the will of the Father. So he said, if my father, if this cup may not pass from me except I drink it, then thy will be done. In other words, he's making his, his will conform to the Father. And he came again, and he found them asleep again, and their eyes were heavy, and he left them, and he went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Now, let's look over at Luke 22. This is the same story, but we get a little more insight here. In Luke 22. And let's pick it up just in the interest of time. We'll pick it up at verse 41. Luke chapter 22 verse 41. And he withdrew from them about a stone's cast. And he kneeled down and he prayed. Saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthened him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat, as it were, great drops of blood falling to the ground. So there was an anguish without the prayer. This was the most difficult thing that he had. This very unusual situation when he sweat drops of blood is the most difficult thing he had to do. He had already told the disciples he was going to go. 
but to make his will conform to the will of the Father, to make his will conform that what was going to happen. You see, he knew not only that there was that, that his flesh was going to perish. He knew not only that his physical man was going to perish. He knew he was going to have to go, go into hell and that his spirit man would be tormented for days. But for three days, his spirit man was going to be tormented by demons and, and, uh, and Satan himself in the demonic realm. And uh, he, he understood that. And there was great anguish over that. And there was such anguish that he was sweating drops of blood as he conformed, as he made the decision, as he made the choice to conform his will to the will of the Father. And I will tell you that sometimes that's the most difficult thing to do, is to make your will what the will of the Father is. And, and we can delude ourselves. We can, we can fool ourselves. We can tell ourselves, well... I think this is what God had for us to do. Well, maybe we didn't really press in and we didn't really get the, the direction of the Lord. We didn't really find out exactly what it was that God had for us. The most important thing that a, that a Christian can do is make the attempt, make the effort to conform your will to the will of the Father on an everyday basis. What do you have for me to do today? Do you have for me to do this? Do you not have for me to do this? What is it that you have for me? It's the most, it's, it's, it's the most important decision that you can make at any given time. And sometimes they take the covenant meal and just to do that is the last part of the covenant meal. It's to say, Father, I conform my will to your will. I want my will conformed. I want you to speak to me concerning what you have for me, the things you have for me to do. I don't want to go off and do things in my own strength. I don't want to go off and do things in my own choice. I want you to do those things for me. I want you to, 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 to conform my will to your will so that what I do is what you have for me to do because it's in that you're going to be empowered. What we call the anointing or the empowerment of God, it comes when you're doing what God has for you to do. The reality of the anointing of God is it rests upon you when you're doing what God has for you to do, when you're doing what he wants for you to do, what he assigned for you to do. You receive his power, you receive his direction, you receive his, what we call his anointing or his empowerment as a result of that. So I just, I just encourage you in this, you know, there were there were instances there were uh, uh, there were different instances in the Bible where where the blood of Jesus was shed, and they were shed for specific purposes, and uh, to cover that the activity of a human being uh, in in uh, uh, in all the activities of humanity where Satan could enter in, Jesus covered them with his blood. And in this case, he was covering the anguish of your mind with his blood. There was a, there was a, there was an anguish. There was a, a conforming of your will to the will of God. And it was such a big deal that his blood was shed to cover that activity of the part of the human being. It's a powerful thing. And Jesus shed his blood for it. So it's not something that's a frivolous thing. It's not something that only the most spiritual among us do. It's something that every one of us do because Jesus shed his blood to cover that activity of conforming your will to his will. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, we just worship you. We just praise you. I thank you for your covering. We thank you for your blood. Thank you that your blood was shed for us. Thank you that your blood co co covered our minds, our wills, our emotions, that you you went to the cross for us, but you did more than that. There were things that you did to cover us with your blood that we would be protected, that we would be enabled and empowered to do the very thing you charged us to do. The Bible says that Jesus humbled himself. He submitted himself to the will of the Father. And that humility was to submit himself to the will of the Father. He laid aside his divinity and took upon him the form of a servant, meaning he took upon him the form of, a, of, of an Israelite, of a covenant man to walk the earth and covenant. He laid aside that divinity and took, took upon himself that, that, that servanthood, if you will, or that humanity in order to demonstrate that it was possible to come and to pay the price and to do things like this, to shed his blood on your behalf and my behalf, that we could conform our will to his. 
That was a powerful and extraordinary thing. And, and he didn't take it lightly, and we don't take it lightly either. And Father, I just thank you that we make a decision tonight to conform our will to yours, to conform our desires to yours. We thank you for that now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, the blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. Reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose. It will never lose its power. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. We praise you. We thank you. We thank you that your blood was shed for us. We thank you that your blood was given for us. We thank you that you covered us with, our, with, our, with your blood. Hallelujah. And Father, let's do this for all of you who are watching at home and all of you that are here. Father, fresh and new tonight, we accept your finished work on the cross, on our behalf. Just say that for me. Say, I accept Jesus' finished work on the cross for me, on my behalf. I accept His offer of salvation. I accept His covering. I accept His protection. I accept His offer of covenant. And I am in covenant with you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, praise God. The, the word says, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. You should do, we, we do it every day. Gail and I take, the, take, take it every day. We need to keep fresh in our mind those benefits. I mean, the word says, forget not all of our benefits. And you know, there's a war going on every single day. And you need the power of the Holy Ghost working within you to combat the, the effects of the devil and the things that go on every single day. But we take the covenant meal every single day because we want it to be fresh. We want it to be new. We want it to be uppermost in our mind. I have a covenant with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I don't forget the benefits that belong to me. I don't forget those things that are mine. I remember them every day. And as often as you do this, you do it in remembrance of him. Hallelujah. Well, Father, we just thank you. We bless you. We thank you once again for your covenant. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your deliverance. I just thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we bless you, Lord God. I just, and, and I want to end. You know, we, we, we've all read Psalm 91. And uh, it's a powerful psalm. Biblical scholars believe that this is the oldest writing in the Bible, and that Moses wrote it when he was in the desert, uh, and, and, and it was a it was a it was a protection over the Israelites in the desert, and uh, yet with all that time, with all that length of time, there is there is a, a, a freshness and a newness to it and a power to it. And the power that Moses was calling upon on behalf of the covenant people of God is just as strong today. Amen. It's just as powerful today. It's just as relevant today. And it's just as able. This Amen. word is able because Amen. it is God's empowerment and it's God's word. I encourage you, you should memorize Psalm 91 so that you know it, so that you live by it, so that you keep it. And every day when you hear things like people talking about COVID-19 and, and all that sort of thing, no, 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 no plague or calamity comes near my tent because that's the promise. That was the promise that God gave me was that no 
plague nor calamity was coming near my tent. And even if it comes near my tent, it's not coming on me. It's not coming on my family. It's not coming on my children. It's not coming on my parents. It's not coming on whoever. It will not come because I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Let's just read it. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Once again, it's, a, it's not just words. There's a reality of this. This is who we are. This is what we're supposed to be living by. We're supposed to be living under this umbrella. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He's my fortress. He's my God. And Him will I trust. Surely He delivers me from the snare of the valley and from the noise of the pestilence. He will cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalketh and that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Only with thine eyes shall thou seek and behold the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, who is my refuge, the most high thy habitation, no evil shall befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh their dwelling. He will give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all their ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, and the young lion and the dragon. Thou shalt trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he's known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and I will honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. There is a reality to that. It's not just words. It's a living, breathing reality in the form of the Lord Jesus Christ. And his Holy Spirit who dwells upon the inside of you. That the power to make all of those things work lives on the inside of you. And you call upon it whenever you need it. And I just encourage you, meditate that power. Meditate the source of that power. Meditate who it is that made that promise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God, that you are our Redeemer. You are our life. You are you are a healer. You are a deliverer. I thank you. You're the restorer. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God. We bless you in Jesus' name. Well, thank you so much for, for joining us tonight. You know, I, I you know, I've said it before, I'll say it again, that if the body of Christ had risen up, this COVID thing would have gone overnight. Would have just disappeared overnight. But it can disappear from you overnight. It can disappear from your family overnight. It can disappear from your life overnight. By f- at least for you. It has for us. And I'm sure it'll do the same thing for you. God has no respect for a persons. Any plague, any calamity, any one of those things will not come near my tent. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, Jesus. And thank you for watching tonight. God bless you and we'll see you on Sunday. Amen. 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 The Lord is good. His mercy is good forever. <laughs> you know, we need to remind ourselves of those things. We want to, we want to keep them. I mean, there were promises. The promises are ours. They belong to us. Amen. Amen. What happened to... Uh, oh, we'll excuse him. Hi, Hannah. Bye. 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 Bye.